Time now for Inside Out as we are joined by SNY NFL insider Connor Hughes. And Connor, we just heard Robert Sala say he's going to wait until Wednesday to decide who the Jets' backup quarterback is going to be against Detroit. What are going to be the ultimate factors in this decision? Uh, I, I, honestly, I think there's probably a little bit of politics at play, right? Because, I mean, think about when the Jets first sent Zach Wilson to the bench. You know, the way that they pitched it, the company line that they sent forward was that this was just going to be a system reset for Zach, right? I mean, they weren't they weren't casting him off. They weren't writing him aside. They just needed him to step back, regroup, figure out his basics, figure out his fundamentals. Then when he was ready to play, when he was ready to be a starter again, they were going to make him the starting quarterback. Well, if Zach Wilson is good enough to be the Jets' backup quarterback, that means that technically you feel confident in him being the starter if something were to happen with Mike White, which means you're confident in Zach Wilson starting football games, which goes against the whole, well, Zach Wilson's going to play when he's ready narrative. So I, I think some of that is at play, but what the Jets need to realize here and what I think they will realize is that this is about winning football games, which is why they sent Zach Wilson to the bench in the first place, the real reason why they sent Zach Wilson to the bench in the first place. And they realized very, very clearly off of that Bills game that Zach Wilson gives them a better shot than Joe Flacco because Joe Flacco right now is just a liability when he's out there. Politics in New York sports? Say it ain't so, Connor. Uh, you also wrote a column on Monday on SNY.TV that Mike White being better than Zach Wilson is no longer good enough. White has to win some games. One thing that might help is getting an early lead. So what do the Jets need to fix to be a better team in the first half? I think, honestly, when you watch these Jets games, it's weird because they just come out sluggish. And, and it's not just the offensive line. It's not just the running backs. It's not just the receivers. It's not just Mike White. It's just they don't seem to start very fast. They're one of those teams that it almost takes to get to halftime and then coming out in the third quarter for them to really get going and then to really start fit, feeling themselves. And, and I don't know if it's a change in practice structure. You know, I, I remember – uh, Adam Gase and Todd Bowles used to do kind of like a competitive period to start it off to kind of uh, initiate and get that blood flowing early and to, to hopefully try to start faster in games. Obviously, it didn't work for those two guys. So uh, Robert Sala has obviously had some success with this team to this point, to say the least. So he's going to have to uh, rack his brain around how they can start starting faster a little bit uh, or, or starting faster just in general. Because, I mean, this is a problem that uh, that exceeds well past just this Bills game and just the Vikings game. The Jets have had struggles with this throughout the year. Yeah, that great start for Mike White against the Bears has been the outlier in that department yeah. recently. All right, you tweeted on Sunday in agreement with Bart Scott that Elijah Moore should be getting the ball on those jet sweep type of plays mm -hmm. instead of Braxton Berrios, but you don't think that it's going to happen anytime soon. So the question is, why are Robert Sala and Mike LaFleur more comfortable with Berrios on those type of plays? Yeah, look, if Bart Scott is a captain of the give Elijah Moore those touches ship, I, I want to be his first mate because I've been screaming this from atop the Raptors for a while now, that, that every time the Jets think about designing a play for Braxton Berrios, they should immediately just give that play to Elijah Moore. But the way that the Jets view this, and, and look, Bart is going to disagree with this, I can disagree with this, but at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter because it's how this team feels internally, is that anytime they give Braxton Berrios the ball on a jet, a jet sweep, on a screen it's replicating a punt return or kick return situation and Braxton Berrios is an all pro returner now the argument that I would make to counter that is that if you gave Elijah Moore the chance to run back punts and kicks he would be an all pro returner too and and but the, look that that's why the Jets are doing it they believe that uh that Braxton Berrios just has a little bit more uh, natural feel in those situations as well uh but you know look I I, I disagree with it but you know my opinion doesn't matter too much Ah, uh, come on. I'm sure they're listening to you in Bort, but Moore was targeted <laughs> a season high 10 times against Buffalo in the passing game. Connor Hughes, thanks for your time here on Honda Sports Night. Thank you.